This is a celebration of Toyota, shoehorning in one of the world's few remaining naturally aspirated V8s into its compact Lexus sedan. And a look back at the 2JZ, yesterday's world's greatest straight six, together with today's. Keeping in mind that today's world's greatest straight six is made by BMW. Say hello to eight cylinders, 4,969 cubic centimeters, and 472 horsepower that don't arrive until 7,100 glorious RPM. This is a big V8 in a little sedan. One blip of the throttle is all it takes to remind us of what's been lost. <laughs> and go. but something gained. The Supra just showed us what we got in exchange for the V8's noise, a winner. It makes 90 fewer horsepower, but weighs almost 600 pounds less. So the cars have similar power to weight ratios. And the Supra's eight speed has gear ratios 25% shorter than the Lexus's eight speed. All that translates into a win, but flat foot them both from a stop without brake torquing the Supra to build boost and they're dead even. So keep that in mind if you're ever racing an IS500. It's quick. Launch them both magazine style and well, it pulls a six tenths advantage to 60 miles an hour, which it keeps the whole way through the quarter mile and finishes almost a hundred feet ahead. This is a familiar story with BMW's B58 straight six. It's an overachieving psychopath, regardless of what you put it in. It's what powers the Toyota Supra and the all new all wheel drive M240i and also the M340i, which, excepting the M3, is the fastest and most powerful three series you can buy. Well, now, we race. Go. Better not blink. Rewind. Hang on, hang on, wait a second. There's something I don't understand. Look, the BMWs make the same amount of power and weigh the same, so I expect them to be close as they were. expect the M240i to get a jump off the line because it has all-wheel drive, which it did. And then I expect the M340i to be identical the rest of the way down the track, which it was. My question is, what is the Supra doing here? It has the same 382 horsepower engine as the BMWs and the same quick shifting ZF eight speed automatic gearbox, but with shorter gears. It has a 315 rear axle instead of the BMW's 281. So it should be quicker. Shorter gears mean quicker acceleration. And that's before you start calculating the big problem, which is that it weighs 480 pounds less than the BMWs. They should have never been able to keep up with that Supra. And I have absolutely no explanation for this. Though I do have a conspiracy theory. 
BMW's not giving Toyota the full beans. I guess that's what happens when one car company builds a car on behalf of another company. That's also why the Supra doesn't have the S58 in it. BMW's M4 does. This is the brand new M4 xDrive competition, which pairs all-wheel drive with BMW's most powerful straight six. The S58 is a different animal entirely, not just a B58 with an extra turbo. It has lower compression ratio to tolerate more boost, a bigger bore and shorter stroke to trade efficiency for revs, and forged pistons to hold up to not only the 503 horsepower this thing is rated at, but the 1000 horsepower that tuners get out of these things. That sounds a lot like something else that's very old, but we still love anyway. Aw, uh, don't be so hard on yourself, buddy. You still got a couple good shows in you. <laughs> Thanks, Randy. But I was talking about that, because that's also a three liter turbocharged straight six. That's a 2JZ. And this one makes 1,250 horsepower at the wheels. Wow, I've only ever seen that on YouTube. Mm -hmm. This is YouTube. the horsepower, you'd think the Supra would have absolutely annihilated the M4, but it barely eked out a victory, and that's for two reasons. First, the M4's all-wheel drive shaves three quarters of a second off the rear drive M4's already outrageous three and a half second run to 60, putting the M4 in the two second range where Bugattis and LaFerraris live. Even with anti-lag and drag radials, the Supra can't match the M4's whole shot. Second, Speed is all about area under the curve, and the S58's is a big flat plateau of brute force everywhere. The 2JZ is the opposite, it's dead almost. But once the turbo finally spools, it slingshots past the M4 like the BMW isn't even running. Do that through a couple of gears and well, eventually the Super crosses the line just before the M4. <laughs> but going way way more quickly. Oh my God! You know, that's the first drag race I ever really liked. I mean, I've never driven something that was so exciting in a straight line. <laughs> Do you believe that a stock M4 just almost kept up with a thousand horsepower Supra through the quarter mile? Well, such is the march of progress. Such is also the march of progress that the two oldest engines here sound by far the best. Can I get an amen? Yes. But where power is concerned, BMW's B58 and S58 are in a league of their own. This engine is a future icon, kids. So enjoy it now, because we all know what's coming next. <laughs>